Greetings, greetings, all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. Also, if you want to support the brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. And we got everything from hoodies, hats, t shirts, anything to get your drip right, we got you. Okay, today's episode, this is a very special episode. It hits home because it's this whole talk about black Americans versus Caribbean. And people have the different dynamics of how they look at it and how they was raised. For example, I was born in America and my family's from Barbados. We're Bayesian. And a lot of people look at different cultures and don't understand their outtake of if you come from the Caribbean or you know you're raised in America, you're, you will, you're from America and... What? your outlook of black culture is completely different. So it's a little tug of war, but I got through it. And at the end, I had to really watch it over again because I was even confused myself. Just so many things that's so confusing that you never understand how other people take it. And the more you understand, you understand we have more in common than we have different. So you guys take a look at it. Let me know what you think. Let's jump right into it and see what's going on. All right, let's get it and see if you guys agree. Leave your comments down below if you've been through this too. And if you're from the Caribbean, you're from here, let me know where you're from. Leave it down below. Black privilege. Let's talk about it. Because this is a very interesting concept that my American husband and I, as a Jamaican immigrant to America, talk about often. So let's define privilege. What does it mean? Privilege is a special advantage, a special opportunity, a special immunity that is given to a particular person or a particular group of people. And I often say to my husband that sometimes I feel as if I have black privilege because I was born and raised in Jamaica, which is a predominantly black country. When you're born and raised in a country like that, where the leaders are black, the government is black, it's majority black, you kind of grow up with this majority complex where you are not inclined to lead with your blackness or to lead with your race or to immediately recognize that I'm black because it's just the way we are. It's just who we are, it's just the way we live. So when I moved to America 12 years ago, I showed up in the same way. Oftentimes I'd be in places and I wouldn't even realize I was the only black person there or we were the only black people in there until we had left, but my husband would because that was just kind of his reality. And so there is this narrative going around that black people from the Caribbean who moved to America, that we get certain preferential treatment over and above what black Americans receive in this country. And he and I will argue all the time because I will say that's so unfair and it's so untrue because when I moved to America, I literally had to start over professionally. I wasn't given any breaks. I wasn't given any promotions. I wasn't given any raises just because I came from a different country. The difference between Haitians and Jamaicans is Haitians claim everybody to be Haitian. But with Jamaicans, you got to prove to them that you're Jamaican. Hear me out. A Haitian will come up to you and say, are you, are you Haitian? Are you Haitian? You look Haitian. And when a Haitian asks you if you're Haitian, they're not asking if you're Haitian. They're telling you that you're Haitian. And you're like, no, I'm not Haitian. I'm Guyanese or Jamaican. Even when you tell them no in their head, he's a liar. He's, he, he, he from Cap Haitian Alabadi. I know his mother, Monushka, his father, Kervance. We went to worship. He, 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 he liar. He, he Haitian. They made up this whole narrative, this whole story about you. They know your life. As for Jamaicans, if you tell a Jamaican that you're Jamaican, the first thing that they're going to say is, especially if you speak standard English and you have no little trace of patois, Jamaican patois in your voice. I what part of Jamaica you come from? And you say a specific part of Jamaica, a part of Jamaica where people don't really know, like porous or junction. What part of junction you come from? It's like a members only club and they ask you a series of questions. You ever go out river and go wash up? You never wee wee in a chimney? I put butter pan dumpling? Even if you answer yes to all of their questions, you are still not Jamaican in their head. Pilot, you know some of the things that I bought at Jamaican Pilot? 
Achu, I must say Jamaica, New York, him come from. I don't think so, my Jamaica. Where is the lie? Where is the lie? You could be, you could be from Norway. If you are black, Haitians will claim you to be Haitian from Cap Haitian or Labadee. I know your mother, her name is Manushka. And Jamaicans? No, I'm not thinking about the Jamaican, you know. I'm not thinking about the Jamaican. Black American people, because the Caribbeans and the Africans, I don't see them standing up with us either. Quick recap, the question was, if there was a race war in America, who do we think would stand up for black Americans? One of the creators said, hands down, she believes that Africans and Caribbeans would not be there to stand up and help fight, but probably more black Americans would be able to help in this race war. And it's sad, but I, I agree. Um, I, I do agree. Um, if you watch the video, she went on to explain about the us and them mentality and the diaspora wars that happen and how some Caribbean and African people feel that they are better than black Americans. This is a really tough conversation even for me to have. I am a black woman, but I am also Zambian, so I'm an African woman who lived part of my life in Africa and part of my life in the U.S. Majority of my life was in the U.S., so in some ways, yeah, black culture has influenced my life in numerous ways, right? But I also do agree that some of our immigrant parents that raised us, y'all know, they was talking mad cash about black Americans. And I'm even speaking from the experience of my African family married into a black American family. And even some of those black Americans kind of started having that us and them mentality where I remember having internalized racism growing up because of this mindset. This is a conversation that really needs to be had. So, I so I'm a Trinidadian descendant. Justin and I were having a discussion of that we thought were controversial regarding Trinidadian and Native American culture. So one of the things that we thought were controversial was the idea that you can wear a headdress in Trinidad and Tobago for carnival, but you cannot wear a headdress in America because it's deemed disrespectful or hurtful or offensive to some, right? So, sorry got allergies i had to clear my nose anyway i came on here because i wanted the opportunity to probably interview a trinidadian indian or anyone from the caribbean who can identify with the carnival culture a native american and perhaps a black american that identifies with the native american culture as well so when i first went to college i told someone good night and they look at me like i'm crazy and i was like I'm not going to bed. <laughs> and I was like, it's like just how I greet you good morning, I greet you good night, yeah. or I greet you good afternoon. Yeah. So it's not me trying to signal that it's time for bed, but it's me trying to say like, I'm greeting you at the night time. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of cultural differences and it took me a while, but I feel like one the, the one thing that I really don't like is I like to say good morning to people. And in Florida, I now have to suppress that urge to say good morning and greet someone and just walk past them straight because in the past I've said good morning to random people like walking into the gym or something like that and they would just walk past straight and I like you only have no manners well if you think Florida's rude man you definitely don't want to go to New York, New York. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yo I was, I was raised in a Caribbean family and there were a lot of things man that I had to like learn when I when I exited the house, there's a lot of things that are you know that are colloquially American that I was never really like exposed to. But I mean, he's totally right. I mean, the, from the food to the to the way you speak and the way you understand English are are sometimes completely different. Some people say like even the drive to to do well in school and and succeed is is higher. But I I don't know if that's true. But he's totally right though. Like there's a lot of times, especially with Western parents, like immigrant parents in general, but like especially Western parents, like I have found that. There's a way that we, we learn how to move to the world. And once we exit the house and we enter like American society, there's a lot of stuff we got to like suppress or change so that we can move more intelligently in, in American society because some of the value systems just don't match. People need to understand that not every black person in America comes from America. If I had a dollar for the amount of times that people came up to me and slandered me for not knowing a specific line dance or a specific black American culture, I would be millionaire, millionaire. In Haitian culture, we have a saying called la caille, l'église, basically, which means 
house, school, and church. Those are the only three places that we were allowed to really go to as children. Two out of three of those places, I might have well just been in Haiti. Home and church. Creole was spoken. I had Haitian food, Haitian music, all of it. All that being said, I don't have as much exposure to American culture as the average black American. So to come up to me and tell me, oh Christian, you're not black. I'm a dark skinned man. Yes, I am black. I'm just not African American. That is not the only type of black on this earth. It's that tunnel vision mindset that like a lot of people have that really just it's it's sad it's ignorant it's it's a shame really so to stereotype me as a person who loves fried chicken grape kool-aid watermelon can't swim i didn't even grow up eating that stuff and i can swim but to stereotype people in general is already crazy think of this like a square and a rectangle a square is a rectangle but a rectangle is not a square i'm black but i'm not african-american african-americans are black but not all black people are african-american Although black people may have their differences, that does not justify diaspora wars between African Americans, Caribbeans, and Africans. No one place is better than the other. We are all one race, but we need to acknowledge our differences. I was having a conversation with my Uber driver yesterday about something that I don't think we talk enough about. He was Ghanaian and I'm Nigerian and we were just talking about, you know, how we do when Africans meet, just talk about how terrible it is to live on a continent, be from a continent that has so much abundance, meanwhile the people themselves suffer and struggle and don't have access to those resources. And the reason I don't think we talk enough about it is because I feel like black people across the diaspora, in my opinion, live in this cognitive dissonance that because Africans stayed in Africa that they were better off. Because Africans know their roots and they never left, they were better off. And additionally, are under the belief of this propaganda that it's actually the Africans' fault that this happened to us because they sold us off. And the reason I say that there's a cognitive dissonance is because on one hand I see this attempt by Africans to rewrite the narrative of the perception of Africa on the world stage. A lot of, in my opinion, rich kids go back and they take videos and pictures and say this is the real Africa, not the Africa that you see in the news. And granted, the photos and videos of the starving kids in the village with flies all over them is also not the real Africa. but. Doing it that way is also missing, in my opinion, the full nuance and context of what's still going on till this day to black people across the diaspora. Because to say, well, look at us, we're living good over here, this is Wakanda, while simultaneously having so many of our population risk their lives to go to countries to f willingly immigrate to those same countries that forcefully displaced their ancestors centuries ago. They're risking their lives to willingly do that. I wonder, I wonder why that's the case. And I say this as someone that comes from Nigeria, so I understand that not every single country on the continent experiences this, but enough of them do. In my opinion, Nigeria, my country, is a giant oil company that happens to have people in it because that's how it's run. Nigeria has so much oil, it's giving Dubai. It's giving Saudi Arabia. But is it giving that in Nigeria? Absolutely not. In fact, that same resource, Nigeria always has a shortage of it. It's always inflating that same resource. It's selling it back to its people way more expensive than it should be. And it's also always running out of it. Isn't that interesting? And I could talk about this forever. The puppet government, the shadow government of it all. But it burns my chest and it burns my soul just thinking about it. But I just want to leave you with one thing, one, one thought. What was the biggest weapon that the Europeans brought to the continent? What weapon does someone have against someone that is physically stronger than them? They mess with their mind. The biggest weapon that the Europeans brought to the continent, in my opinion, was psychological manipulation. And in my opinion, many of us, till this day, across the diaspora, are still psychologically manipulated. Until we get free here, we will never truly be free. Hi guys, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the last video that I had made regarding racism and prejudice against Indian people. As I'm going through the comments, I can see that it has Indian people going up against black people, black people going up against Indian people, whether it's Africans versus Indians or African Americans versus India. Let, let me just stop you there. I'm going to remind you, we are both people of color. We are both equals. There's no reason for comments like black people trying to be like Indian people or Indian people trying to be like black people. That's not making sense. Indian people and black people were both discriminated against, put into slavery, degraded, and so on and so forth. 
for us to be fighting with each other like this it simply don't make sense because we are literally brother and sister the whole purpose of my original video was to bring awareness on casual racism and prejudices against Indian people but then as I was going through the comments something else hit me a lot of people are not even familiar with the history behind Indians no one really speaks up about the struggles our ancestors faced when the British was roaming free in Trinidad running things when it was roaming free in India running things and so on and so forth Google is free feel free to go ahead look up the history go ahead and share with the world do as you please but I'm gonna remind you to just love one another because we are both equals we are both brother and sister sister and brother at the end of the day a lot of you know my page is always good vibes only I promote good vibes entertainment things like that occasionally the water does get hot but that's okay because these are the conversations that we need to have I love you guys stay blessed Mwah. hey guys so I'm curious, right? Um, so I'm like eight months into my whole dating experience, not really trying to get into a relationship or whatever. And, you know, I've been noticing something about like black American dudes versus black cultured American dudes. And so like the difference is like the lack of a, like affection. Now I'm not a very affectionate woman, but like I noticed that with black American dudes, sometimes like you gotta like either initiate it or let it be known that it's okay to touch me kind of thing. Versus like black cultured American dudes, um, whether they're like from the islands or Africa or from another country, anything that, you know, have like, uh, how can I, I don't wanna, anything that has like a, a culture, <laughs> like a real culture, not saying Americans don't have culture, but a real culture, it's like they value women differently. Like they're a little bit more affectionate. They want to take on our responsibility. They really just want to treat you like a queen. Um, and not saying black American dudes don't, but it's kind of like for them, it's it comes naturally versus like black American dudes, you kind of have to like hold their hands and teach them how to do it. Um, so I'm curious, like, am I the only one that's noticing that? Or is that like, is that normal? Um, is there something that, cause I mean, I'm Haitian American myself. So like, I'm used to like having or seeing like my family, like in my, like the men in my family naturally do that. But with these, with these American dudes, it's just like, I know I some guy and he's training and Belgian at the same time. I actually love the fact my accent be switching because then people is never really be able to tell where I'm from. My main accent is a Belgian accent though. Call black. And then when you buy the Guyana, the Guyanese accent just come out. Even when I'm in Barbados and my Guyanese family come to Barbados, when they start to talk Guyanese, the Guyanese accent just come out. And then my Belgian friends just be like, big man, you sound annoying, big man, carry your ass roll. My Belgian friends just say Guyanese is talk pagli. And then my Guyanese friends just say the Belgians, them is talk retarded, can't understand nothing they say. You gotta love the training accent though all you like the video and share the video now boy which caribbean country or island y'all believe have the best accent let me know yeah i do feel like africans do get made fun of a lot like yeah. in school yeah, oh, I, I, that. I got made fun of a <laughs> lot like mm -hmm. i got bullied for that, being african mm -hmm. that can also create the animosity mm -hmm. towards yeah the animosity mm -hmm. the word. bullying like your name and stuff i'm not gonna lie we didn't we didn't know no better we joke on each other it's a part of our culture to make fun of stuff that may be serious but to make the light out of it because that's part of our culture and Africans don't necessarily know that because obviously they have their own culture, so mm -hmm. they looking at it like, more yeah, they, they yeah. looking at it as, oh, that's that's super disrespectful. When we looking yeah. at it like, yo, it's just a joke. It's really not that deep. Like, hey, we don't get out after a joke. Yeah, you so. just can't say SMB. That's it. Look, what I can say, our similarities bring us together, and our differences it highlights our uniqueness. The more we come together as a culture, the more we find this understanding. If you guys like the convo, leave your comments down below. Or you can just hit me up on my morning show and we'll talk more about this, okay? Till next time, it's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel.